So I've been in the engineering world for the past four and a half years now. The first four years I spent at university completing my bachelor's degree, majoring in civil engineering. In the last six months, I've been in a design office working as a graduate structural engineer in the buildings team. And in this video, I wanna share five of the mistakes that either I have personally made or I've seen my peers make while at university so that those of you that are currently studying don't follow in our footsteps. And with that, let's just get started. Number one, waiting until your final year of university to start applying to internships. Most undergraduates, including me at the time, don't really have a good understanding of what it's like to actually work as an engineer. For some, I've seen getting this experience and exposure actually change their mind and make them go down a completely different career path. However, for me, because I was pretty keen on engineering, getting internship experience was all about discovering what sort of work I want to do after I graduate. Because as civil engineers, we've actually got a bunch of options to choose from, like structural engineering, geotechnical engineering, site engineering, project management, and even working in the mines. While I was at uni, I sort of had an idea of the role that I wanted to do after I graduate, but I didn't know that it was exactly what I wanted to do because I hadn't actually tried it and I knew that the day-to-day -day work would differ from what I was learning at uni. When I was finally offered my first internship, it was to work as an undergraduate civil engineer in a roads and highways team and it was not what I wanted to do at the time, but I decided to accept it anyway because I had an idea in my mind that potentially I could move into the team I wanted to be in within that company if I just got my foot in the door. And well, that didn't end up happening, but I did get thrown around into a few other teams while I was at this company. So I did get experience working as a geotechnical engineer and a site engineer as well. One of the fears I definitely had, and I think a lot of my peers had too, is that during first year and second year, we just don't know enough to be useful at an internship, so we won't bother replying. In hindsight, this was a totally irrational fear because in many instances, I found myself just standing around and observing the senior engineers and not actually having to apply any technical engineering knowledge. And in those cases where I was asked to apply some technical engineering knowledge, the senior engineers understood that I didn't know a lot because I was just a uni student, so they always provided me with resources to help me understand what was going on and were always available to answer my questions, so I never got stuck and had to go through it alone. All in all, the takeaway from this should be that you're never too early to start applying to internships, and if you get offered a position that isn't exactly what you want to do, but it's got the potential to offer you a range of experience, you should definitely accept it because you never know what doors it'll open for you in the future. All right, number two is having a poor resume. And by poor resume, I don't mean having a resume that lacks all these awesome projects and previous work experience. I mean having a resume that is poorly formatted, looks unprofessional, and is missing key components of a resume. When you apply to internships or graduate positions online, the only piece of information that recruiters have about you is what you put on your resume. So if it looks like crap and just looks unprofessional, they're just gonna toss it to the side and move on to the next one, because they've probably got a whole stack to get through and yours didn't stand out at all. I recently looked back at the first resume that I I made while at university and geez, it's no surprise that I didn't get an internship until I switched things up and gave it a complete makeover. Unfortunately for me, I didn't have this realization until the end of third year. So I missed out on two good years of internships and didn't end up getting one until the very end of third year. Likewise, for some of my peers, they couldn't get an internship either. And for them, it actually pushed back their graduation because at the university that I attended, it was a program requirement that you actually got a certain amount of work experience before you graduate. If you wanna learn what worked for me and exactly how I ended up setting out everything on my resume, I've actually made a full video on this and I'll pop a link to it in the description below. All right, number three, not revising throughout the semester. Cramming knowledge into your brain may be enough to give you a passing mark so that you can get through the course, but in the long run, you're gonna forget a lot of that information that you learned. And when those same concepts pop up in future courses, you're gonna have no idea what they're talking about. I think we've all been guilty of this at times, but this really shouldn't be something you get into the habit of. Engineering is one of those programs that really builds on the information you learn in earlier courses, with many second, third, and fourth year courses having a prerequisite course list. This prerequisite course list isn't just about stopping people from doing the program out of order, but it's to ensure that people know the basics because in these more senior courses, the lecturers are just gonna skip straight past them. Now, on the other hand, if you can revise throughout the semester when it comes to tests and exams, you won't have to cram because you would have spaced out your learning throughout the semester. And also when it comes to learning new content, you're going to understand it a lot better because you've got a good grasp on the previous knowledge you've just covered in class. I definitely remember times 
at uni where I was sitting in class and I just had no idea what was going on. And I could almost always attribute that feeling to not fully understanding the concepts that were covered in the past weeks. I found that when I made the effort to keep on top of my revision from the beginning of a course, I was a lot more engaged in class because I felt like I was ready for the new content because I had a good grasp on the previous concepts that were covered in the past weeks. All right, number four is having a bad LinkedIn profile. And similar to what I said about having a bad resume, having a bad LinkedIn profile can also put a huge roadblock in front of you. With so many professionals being instantly contactable through this platform, having a good LinkedIn profile could be your ticket to landing an internship or graduate engineering role, but not if your profile's not up to scratch. Back when I was at uni, and even now as I see the new wave of undergraduates making their LinkedIn profiles, I see the same two mistakes happening time and time again. The first one is a non-professional profile picture. Now this photo doesn't have to be taken by a legit photographer, but it shouldn't be anything that's inappropriate. It's very easy to create a professional profile picture these days. All you need to do is put on a nice button up shirt, tidy your hair, and then just get someone to take a photo of you using your phone. Also, don't worry about your background because you can always remove it later and replace it with a plain white image using a background remover website. Just make sure you give a nice smile and your face has got plenty of light on it. Okay, and the second mistake I see is not adding a bunch of information to your profile. For example, with your headline, you can write something as simple as first year civil engineering student at XYZ University. This may sound like common sense to you, but I've literally seen a bunch of profiles out there where in their headline, they just write student or they just have the name of the university in their headline so I thought I'd bring this up. And with the rest of the information on your profile like your education, your experience, your honours and awards, please don't just write the title. What you really should be doing here is underneath the title you need to add a couple sentences or a few dot points just to give a bit of an explanation so we understand what it is you're talking about. For example, under education you could add in a description for an interesting project you worked on or a cool event you attended. And for honours and awards, say what you actually worked on or created to achieve the award you got presented. All right, and number five, not maintaining skills. In a civil engineering degree, we learn such a varied range of concepts and topics. And depending on what area of engineering you decide to go into after you graduate, some of the key concepts in that area may not have been covered in class for almost four years. And like anything you learn how to do, if you don't continue to practice it, you forget how it's done. This is especially true for the complex topics you cover in an engineering degree, because a lot of them have small intricacies you need to understand in order to be able to apply them. Now, like I said, I know we cover a lot in an engineering degree, but once you narrow down your interests to what you think you'd like to do after you graduate, I'd really encourage you to just once a week or once a fortnight, look back at a course that's in that area of engineering and just revise some of those concepts. Obviously, there'll be times where you're super busy and you won't get to this revision even once a fortnight, but as long as you squeeze it in every so often, you won't go years without looking back at some of these concepts and then have to teach yourself again from scratch when you start working as a graduate. So there you have it, that was five of the mistakes that me and many other engineering students have made while at university, and I hope now that you know what these are, you won't make these mistakes too. Also, if you're interested in learning about how I consistently went from going nothing at the beginning of a course to mastering it come the final exam, you should check out this video I made here where I explain my full note-taking process that I used while I was at university. And if you want to find out what I do now as a graduate structural engineer, check out this other video I made here. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.